Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I am taking my son to a haunted, it's actually a haunted hayride tonight, haunted house and haunted hayride. There's also, uh, there's all kinds of haunted stuff at this place. My 12 year old has always been the kid that's kind of nervous about all that kind of stuff, and this might be his first one, so cross your fingers. Check this out. This is um, uh, Circle Internet Financial's years-long ambitions to go public are alive and well, according to CEO Jeremy Allaire. I wanted to show you this, because I think this is significant to the entire crypto industry. Companies in a strong position not planning to fundraise. Um, their ambitions remain despite delay, CEO says. And then I think it's important because I think this is what it's all about. I think this is what crypto is waiting on. I think this is what the IP, crypto IPO market's waiting on. Stable coin legislation possible this year, CEO Alaire says. I believe that that stable coin legislation is going to trigger the crypto markets to go nuts. I think it's going to trigger IPOs in this market. I think it's going to trigger a lot. And it's also going to trigger Gary Gensler being out of all of our lives. Circle um, has been on the link to platform. I don't think it is now, but you can check. There are several that are heading in that IPO direction. Link to is my sponsor. You can go to linqto.com or you can download the link to app. Look who just put out a, um, the new trailer for XRP Unleashed. It is awesome. And I'm going to play it for you. It has 200, it has a quarter of a million views in less than 24 hours. CC is preparing to sue that crypto startup. The asset in question here is called XRP. Jay Clayton drops this lawsuit on his last day in office, like mission accomplished. We became convinced that this whole case was, was merely a show. The SEC has become a rogue agency. It's been our approach in the last several years, and just really a disaster. Day one, I will fire Gary Gensler and appoint a SEC chair. We don't need more uh, digital currency. We already have digital currency. It's from the U.S. dollar. The SEC came out and said Ether is also not a security. We believe current offers and sales of Ether are not securities. I also have you know, some theories as to some of the non-legal things that the SEC was trying to do. He was also being paid as a profit-sharing partner from his law firm, Simpson Thatcher. That mission of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance was fulfilled. InVent has this unique personal financial interest. He could not be involved in certain matters because they benefited him financially. These two individuals are working at crypto firms that made very big bets on Ethereum. Jay Clayton, within a couple of months, goes to One River who benefited uh, from this decision. If you follow the money, it paints a very clear picture. China's financial elite working with the U.S. financial elite and the regulators of the U.S. financial system to front run the new global digital financial system. Who wins? That's the question here. Who wins? Because I think China wins. Charles said the Chinese have been courting uh, metallic parts. So these, um, <laughs> that's an unbelievable, I mean, really good job on that. Now, the, um, let me hit the refresh button. Uh, in the top of the description of this video is the link. Um, they, they are, they've sold out the Los Angeles screening for XRP Unleashed. There's a few tickets left on Boston, New York, DC, and Atlanta. Houston is sold out. Scottsdale is sold out. I'm sure some of these are going to sell out this weekend. So you're going to want to go uh, check that out. I'll be at three of them. 
Check this out. Uh, this is a good thing to remember today as you watch that trailer. This is Joseph Grunfest, what he said to um, Jay Clayton on December 17th, 2020. If Ether is to be allowed to trade freely in the market, so too must XRP. And if XRP is to be subject to restrictions, so too should Ether. Ether. Any other result creates a competitive imbalance that cannot be rationalized with reference to fair enforcement of the federal securities laws. That's the fact, Jack. And Jay Clayton screwed everybody over. Now, this is an update from, this is an ETHgate red alert. And uh, the, the guys from Empower, Tristan Levitt um, from Empower yesterday held a, um, a, an X Spaces to update everybody on what, what is needed. Remember, the, because of their lawsuit, the SEC did an OIG investigation into Bill Hinman. And they've been sitting on the results of that investigation. And so here is Tristan Levitt saying what you can do to help. Here's how we need everyone's help. This report, it is possible that it has already been issued. We've been waiting. We've been assuming that when it comes out, it will be produced in response to our FOIA requests. But it may, it, you know, looking, looking at the communications from the SEC, trying to read the tea leaves, it's possible that it's already come out from the IG and it's intended to be an entirely private report. Now, again, we can file a new FOIA. We can go through all this rigmarole, but... The swiftest way to get this report out there is to get Congress to request it. And so we are in the process of drafting a letter, which will come out early next week, that identifies just all of the evidence that's already out there in the public and the fact that the IG is conducting its investigation. But we are asking for everyone's help in mobilizing to reach out to Congress to specifically ask that they request this report from the SEC IG if it's already finished. If it's not, certainly, then they can just ask they get a copy of it when it's complete, but Congress, you know, has greater access than a general FOIA request, and so they will be able to get this report, uh, obtain it themselves, and of course then we think that they should release it publicly, given the great public interest, given the way that this issue has impacted so many individuals, including probably the, the vast majority of people on this call. Um, so that's, that's the next step. That's something that everyone can do to be able to try and uh, ensure that there is this public accountability in getting that report out there. And Christy, I, I know you guys have, have pushed at Crypto Law quite a bit in trying to trying to reach out to Congress, trying to have an impact there. Um, I, I don't know how, you know, it, it, would you say so far that you've had much response from that? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think that the tool that we created at Crypto Law makes it easy for anybody to contact their Congress people. So, um, you know, with our previous Connect to Congress, we were able to get in contact with, I believe it was every Congress person. I think we, we got constituents from every location. Um, so we thought, okay, we need to, to do this again. So we have um, put up on our website the connect to Congress um, and the, the letter that would go with that connection is in is requesting the release of this report. So we are, you know, teaming up with you to put that pressure on to Congress and anybody who wants to con contact their Congress people can head to the crypto law website and click on the connect to Congress button and that'll get you right in there to be able to directly contact your um, Congress people and, and make this request. So hopefully that helps and is, you know, an easy way to, to mobilize. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Here's okay, so here is that connect to Congress. You can go to, um, it's crypto-law.us. And when you get there, um, let's see, this is actually, this is the homepage when you get there. And then you'll see you can either connect to Congress if you're in the U.S. or if you're international, connect to Congress by clicking on that one. This is the one here in the U.S. And John Deaton and them have got a form. <clears throat> Very simple. Um, and by the way, um, I thought it worthy of mention, this is the woman who is the inspector general who has been sitting on that Hinman investigation. And I floated the idea someone should invite her to the Washington, D.C. screening 
<clears throat> of XRP Unleashed. Her name is Deborah J. Jeffrey. Remember when Brad Garlinghouse said this? FTX and Binance were the two most important, most influential, and probably SBF and CZ were the two most important players in crypto. Now you've got one definitively in jail, one, I guess, potentially headed to jail. Uh, and, you know, I, I bring this up in context of black swans is like, mm. it's hard to know. But on the positive, think about the freaking resilience of this industry and market that two years ago, somebody who I, I thought I knew a lot about what's going on in crypto, I would have said these are the two most important companies. The CEOs are the two most important companies now either are in jail or I, I think headed there. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, in some ways, I mean, I don't, the, the CZ stuff I'm less close to, and so I don't know as many details, but look, I, the resilience of the market, that should give us immense optimism yes. about what's coming. Do I think there's gonna be another black swan? Of course, hundred percent. I just don't know exactly what it is. The, the only one that's gonna be an interesting one to watch, and I don't even know how he calls a black swan, because I feel like, Black Swan, by definition, can't really be, it's like predicted. Oh, didn't see that happening. Yeah. The U.S. government is going after Tether. Mm. It, like, that is clear to me. Uh, I view Tether as a very important part of the ecosystem. And uh, I don't know how to predict the impact. Okay. So Brad Garlinghouse predicted, then this came in ye yesterday. U.S. authorities are investigating Tether. Um, USDT issuer Tether. According to people familiar with the matter, Tether is being investigated <clears throat> for possible sanctions and money laundering violations. And then, uh, but this is the CEO of Tether. At Tether, we deal regularly and directly with law enforcement officials to help prevent rogue nations, terrorists, and criminals from misusing USDT. We would know if we were being investigated as the article falsely claimed Based on that, we can confirm that the allegations in the article are unequivocally false. <laughs> Smoke says this story sounds familiar. Rumors? This, remember when um, uh, SBF said a competitor is trying to go after us with false rumors? FTX is fine. Assets are fine. Details. Um, then, this is, but this is more what I wanted to show. Um, this is uh, Tether's at, he's specific that it's an attestation for Q2 2024. Another great quarter. Short summary of its attestation, not audit, because they won't do that. His attestation says 1.3 billion in net operating profit, 520 million increase in Tether's group owned equity, bringing it to a total of 11.9 billion, 5.33 billion in excess reserves, more than 97.5 billion in U.S. Treasuries, direct and indirect exposure. Seven billion dollar increase from previous quarter. But meanwhile, <laughs> the, the official cool guy, the Digital Asset Investor Channel, had made this comment a while back. This is when Laura Shin was interviewing the CEO of Dell Tech, Tether's Bohemian Bank. You know, the same Bahamas where FTX was. He says, looks like he's in a gaming chair. So to me, that illustrates the absurdity of this. You, the fact that you got some guy talking that's, that's a big part of the operation talking in an interview in a gaming chair with gaming headset on, and you're dealing with billions of dollars. That right there is the tell, folks. That's the tell that this is nothing but a three-letter operation, and these guys are just being told what to do said it for a long time now um we're gonna there's a lot more that i have to cover that i'm gonna cover we're gonna do it in daixrp.com i'm the digital asset investor i'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe hit the like button tell your friends and family away we go